Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number four in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to teach your Raspberry Pi who's boss. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder who are sponsoring this series of video lessons. And also in this series of lessons, we will be using the most excellent SunFounder Ultimate Raspberry Pi Kit. If you guys don't have your kit yet, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon where you can pick a kit up. Now, believe me, in these lessons, your life is going to be easier and my life is going to be easier if we are working on the same set of hardware. Hopefully, most of you guys already have your kit because I told you a few weeks ago that we would be getting to this point. And today is the day that you've been waiting for where we're going to crack open our kits and we're going to be looking at all of that juicy component goodness inside of this kit. And we're going to build our first circuit. And what we are going to do is we are going to actually start working with the GPIO pins. So, so enough of this shameless advertising. Let's jump in and let's talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to teach you today is I'm going to teach you how to interact with the GPIO pins on on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so that's going to be several things that I'm going to have to do today. There's going to be a lot happening in today's lesson. It might be one of those lessons that you need to go back and watch a time or two, but I'm going to try to fit it into one lesson. First thing is you are going to have to watch me change my view here. The first thing that you are going to need to do is on your Raspberry Pi, we're going to have to learn how these pins are numbered. There's 40 GPIO pins. We're going to have to learn the numbering system of what pins do what. That's the first thing. Second thing is I'm going to have to give a very brief refresher on how the breadboards work because I know a lot of you guys are old pros. You've taken the Arduino lessons. You've taken all of my Python lessons. You understand a breadboard, but guys, remember, there's guys out there that haven't gone through that yet. So I'm going to take a few minutes and I'm going to remind them and show them and teach them how the breadboard is configured and how to use the breadboard. You guys that are experts already have a little grace and have a little patience because we were all beginners at, uh, at one point. So I'm going to take three or four minutes and explain the breadboard. Then we're going to look at the schematic that we're going to build today. It's going to be a simple LED circuit. Then we're going to go through the build and then I'm going to show you in Python how to interact with those GPIO pins. This is really exciting because you think, ah, blink an LED, that's not such a big deal. Yeah, but what you got to realize is, is that if you can turn an LED on and off, you could turn a motor on and off, you could open and close curtains or windows, you can kind of do anything once you can work with an LED, with a with a GPIO pin. We start with LEDs because they're low cost and if something goes wrong, it doesn't hurt if you run your LED. And secondly, no one has ever been killed using an LED so it's safe. So I like to do things where people can't hurt themselves. You guys want to see my studio? I always like showing you my studio. I'm still keeping it kind of neat. There's some junk on the floor there. Maybe I need to spin it this way a little bit more. Okay, there you can see it. So you can see, uh, let me get out of your way. You can see this is going to be my build area here. So if I put my kit here, you can see me open it up from the overhead camera. And so I'm going to be building here and then you guys will be watching from this camera and then I'll always be the little guy in the corner there. So that's kind of how, how we have it configured. But enough of this looking in my studio. Let's jump in and let's talk about those GPIO pins. All right. First thing I'm going to tell you is the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi are not as straightforward as what we had on the Arduino. On the Arduino, they were all laid out logically. You had your analog pins, you had your digital pins, they were all labeled. The digital pins that you could use for analog or 
PWM. They had the squigglies by them, TX and RX clearly labeled. It's just like was very, very clear. On the Raspberry Pi, not so much, but never fear, I am going to take you through it step by step and you're really going to understand some things that could be quite confusing because a lot of times this isn't explained very well. Okay, the first thing that we want to do is <clears throat> I want you to look, I want you to orient your Raspberry Pi like I have mine. So your right will be my, my right will be your right and your left uh, and my left will be the same thing. So what I have to the left, I have the power and the HDMI cables to the left. I've got the USB uh, connections down here at the bottom and the GPIO pins are over here at the right. What I want you to see is you have two columns of pins two columns of pins, total of 40 pins, and there are 20 pins in a column. You have oriented this way, you have the left or inside pins, and you have the right or outside pins. And the simplest thing to see is, is that with the board configuration, the board methodology of numbering the pins, they are shown that numbering system here in the kind of olive green. And what you can see is the upper left pin, the upper left pin is pin one. And then the upper right pin is pin two. Go to the next row, row two, the left pin is three, the right pin is four. So it goes like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can see the pattern continues. So the inside column are all your odd pins and the outside column is all your even pins. So odd pins on the inside, even pins on the outside. So if I want pin eight, I would start on the outside and just count. It would count down two, four, six, eight. That would be pin eight. Or similarly, one, three, five, seven, nine. And so that is how it works. Now you will see that with the peach background, I have something different called BCM. There is a different pin numbering scheme and that is called BCM for Broadcom. And in that case, the physical pin three, the physical pin three would be the Broadcom pin two. So you see the Broadcom pin numbering system is completely to our look at it like random. And if you wanted to use that numbering system, you would always have to have the pin out on the wall and check things and it's just very, very confusing. So why do I even tell you about it? So if you run into it in a project later on and the pin numbering doesn't make sense, it's probably because they're using the BCM numbering system and not the uh, and not the physical pin or board numbering system. What I will say is you'll we'll get to this later, but like the first thing that you do when you're interacting with the GPIO pins, you tell it whether you're going to be using the BCM numbering system or the uh, or the uh, board numbering system. Okay, sounds like I'm talking a lot about that, but I really want you guys to understand it. Now what I want you to see is all of these pins in these outside columns, it shows you what the pins do. First of all, you can see that physical pin 1 and physical pin 17, that's a physical pin 1 here, and physical pin 17 are just fixed outputs. They're 3.3 volts, always on, always 3.3 volts. Then in physical pin two, in physical pin two and four, you've got fixed five volt outputs. All right. What you can also see in gray is you've got about six grounds. You've got nine, 25, 39. It looks like 34, 30, and 14. You have, it looks like about six grounds. That's great. You've got a lot of grounds. Again, those are always grounds, just like those other ones are always 3.3 or 5. So those are not pins you can program. Those are not GPIO pins. Those are fixed output pins. Now, some pins, like let's go to the next one. So just the straight out GPIO pins that you can go in and you can interact with are those with an aqua background. It looks like 17 through 22 and 5 through 26. Then similarly on the right, you've got a lot of them. So it looks like you've got a large number of GPIO pins that you can work with. Now, there are a few pins that are dual purpose. They could be GPIO or they could be special function. And an example of that would be pins three and five are your I2C pins or they could be GPIO pins. What I do is 
I don't use them as GPIO pins. I always hold those back in reserve in case I need I2C. Similarly, pins 19 through 23, similarly pins 19 through uh, 23, 19, 19, 21, 23, and then 24 and 26 are your SPI pins. I don't use them as GPIO pins. I reserve them for their special function of uh, SPI. Pins 27 and 28 are reserved for EEPROM. I'm not going to talk a lot about that today, but just bottom line for you, don't use them for now. We'll talk about them more later. And finally, if you want to do serial communication or UART or TXRX, okay, those are pins 6 and 8, and those are very precious, so I don't use those as GPIO pins. Okay, talked a lot, talked too much. What you need to remember is those in Aqua are the best ones to use, okay? The ones in Aqua are the best ones to use. All right, so now what do we want to do? What we want to do now is we want to go in and ooh, make sure that my purple thing is straight. You guys are going to have to just deal with my OCD that I can't stand things being crooked. Okay, there you go. That's going to be that's going to be perfect like that. So what we need to do now is we need to hook up the circuit for the LED. Okay, you guys that are experts already, be patient. We're going to take five minutes, ten minutes to get the new guys up to speed. So no man is left behind or a woman no woman left behind either we're actually having a few more women take these lessons that really makes me happy we've got a demographic of about 99 percent male on this channel and so it's always great to see you ladies out there taking the class thumbs up to you top tech boy salute to the women who are taking uh taking these lessons okay but i digress i digress let's come over here now and let's talk about the circuit that we are going to build and a little bit about how a breadboard works but maybe yeah let's uh let's do that let's talk about the circuit the circuit schematic is here over my head and what you can see is we have a voltage supply hooked up to a resistor that resistor is 330 ohms and then uh, it's connected to an led and the led goes to ground all right so that is the circuit that we're going to build but the trick is to go from that schematic to having parts that we connect together and that's just something that it seems like my students in the real world always really had trouble going from the abstract schematic to plugging things in on the breadboard so the way that I recommend doing it the way that I recommend doing it is start at the plus of your circuit like the plus voltage supply and imagine you're in a little car and you just drive around the circuit and you see what's connected to what well that voltage is going to come from the uh, it's going to come from the Arduino Okay, we're going to use one of those GPIO pins. So we would take a wire from the GPIO pin, which is going to be our plus, and it connects to what? To one leg of the resistor. And then the other leg of the resistor connects to what? To the LED. And then the other leg of the LED comes down and connects to ground. Now, how do we do that? How do we make those connections? We make those connections on a breadboard. And this is what you need to know about a breadboard that along a column, those little holes along a column are all connected together. When you go across a row, across a row, those holes are not connected together. And so if I want the resistor leg to connect to the LED leg, those two legs need to be in the same what? The same column. Okay, so columns are connected, rows are not. Now there is one, or there's a couple of special cases, and that is if you look in the middle of your breadboard, there is a trench running long ways along the middle. Above that and below that are not connected. So all the dots above it in a column are connected. All the holes below it in a column are connected, but those two columns do not connect as it jumps across the trench. The trench breaks the connection. That's one thing. The, <coughs> the other special thing is the bottom two rows are 
connected to themselves all the way across. So bottom row connected to itself all the way across. Second to the bottom row connected to itself all the way across. And same thing, top row connected all the way across. Second row connected all the way across. And I've shown that if you just study this where I've got the annotations, you really got to understand that. If you understand it, building the circuit is going to be really easy. Okay, so how do we go from this schematic to actually building something? And what I'll do is I will show you my solution here. Okay, my solution is here. All right, I'm going to bring the real Raspberry Pi. I'm going to bring the real Raspberry Pi down below the drawn Raspberry Pi. And first of all, we're going to have to figure out where are we going to connect to get that positive and that negative, that positive voltage and that ground. And so we can come back over here and look at our pin out. And we can see the first really convenient ground is pin 9. Pin 9 is the first really convenient ground. And then right below it is a general purpose uh, uh, in, in input output. GPIO is general purpose input output. There's just a plain one there below the ground. And so we are going to use pins 9 and 11. 9 is ground and 11 is going to be the control voltage. And so let's come back over here. And so what you can see is we're going to have a wire that's going to go from pin 11, our GPIO pin. It's going to come over and it's going to hook to the left leg of a resistor, which is going to be a 330 ohm resistor. The right leg of the resistor is going to connect to the LED, and then the other leg of the LED is going to go back to ground. And so this picture is a physical representation of this schematic, and being able to go from the schematic to the picture is really, really important, and you need to stop if you're new and really, really understand that. Okay, so we've gone from the schematic to the actual physical layout. And then I just made a note on here that pin 9 is ground and pin 11 is going to be our GPIO pin. What do we need to do now? We need to get our kit and crack into it. This is the moment we have all been waiting for. So we're going to get our kit and we're going to put it here. And what you guys need to be really, really careful about is keeping this nice and neat. Okay, so we're gonna come down here and you can see that you just pull from the top, pull from the top, and then we're gonna open it up. And wow, look at all of that electronic component goodness. Look at that, we've got all types of stuff in here. But we're not gonna take it apart and look at all the different things. We're gonna look at the things that we need to First, and the first thing we needed was a what? A resistor. And this is our package of resistors. Okay, and you can see that there's all different values here. Well, what did we want? We wanted a 330 ohm resistor. So you're going to be looking for the label that says 330. So that's 100 R, which would be 100 ohms. If there's a K, K means thousand. So one K would be 1000 ohms. And look, there for me is the 330 ohm resistor. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to pull this out carefully. Okay, and you can see that these are our 330 ohm resistors. Now what you need to do is get one on the end and you kind of pull it out of that paper tab. And then same thing here, I hold the tab and I pull it out. Now I have a resistor and I'll put it over here. And now we just throw this off to the side, right? No, we keep our we keep our kit neat. There's also some sort of strange quantum mechanics going on here that when we take the components out of the box and then put them back in, they get twice as big. And so if you take a bunch of stuff out, it's really hard to get it back in and get the lid closed. And so you've got to do it very, very neatly or you'll just really never be able to get the lid closed again. And that's one of the things that really bugged me when I had students in the real world with students that didn't keep their uh, that didn't keep their kits neat. Okay, now what we're going to do is get a red LED. Okay, very important. It needs to be red. And the most important thing is you are not to use the blue LEDs because the blue LEDs are for special occasions only. So maybe we'll have a special project someday in the future for the special occasion LED, but for this, <clears throat> we will use the red. 
Okay, so now I've got a red LED, I've got a 330 ohm resistor, and what else do I need? I need our friend, what? Mr. Breadboard. Okay, you remember I showed you the picture of this. Well, this is the real one. So I've got the breadboard, I've got the resistor, I've got the LED. What do I need now? What I need now is to take this tray out and I need the two wires. Now the wires are going to need to be a female end to connect to the Raspberry Pi and then the other end needs to be male to plug into these holes. So I need a female to male. Now you can see this is a big wonderful bundle, a big wonderful bundle of wires that are male to male. The cool thing about this kit is you notice that there's a whole lot of wires and then there's different sizes like really long ones, mediums and short ones. And that's neat because you don't always want to use a long one, but sometimes you need the long one. So there's some long ones and medium ones and short ones, but these are male to male. So this won't work for this project. And then you can see there is a ribbon here and this ribbon, this one is female on this end female to male and that is what we want and then there's also here a female to female you see that one's female to female you want the female to male okay and now i have to hold these on here and pretend that i didn't already pull the two end ones off but i did a trial run of this so i've already peeled them off but what you can see is they're kind of <clears throat> they're kind of stuck together and what I came out is I came out and I got the brown and the red and then you just kind of peel them away and they'll come loose from the bundle. But you want to do it carefully because you want to keep your other bundle together. And then when I pulled the two off, off I pulled them off together. And I, I kind of like to use red for the voltage supply and I'd like to use black for the ground but the brown is almost black so we'll just pr pretend this brown one is black so I'm using the red and the brown and I'll use red as the voltage uh, control and I'll use the brown one as the ground. Okay now we're just going to put this back together neatly. I'm going to put everything back in its place and you got to kind of do this where you'll be able to get the lid on. Now we'll put the tray back in like that put the tray back in and I kind of need to adjust that a little bit there I think that's going to work and now we will close the lid and there got it all back together neatly now <clears throat> what we need to do I think is come back over here to this view and this shows the circuit up top that we want to build and then this is the real Raspberry Pi and then here is my circuit board with my components and my wires. Now the first thing that I want to do is I want to hook these two wires up because that's really the hardest thing is getting the wires in the right place on the Raspberry Pi board because you got to kind of pay attention. And what you can see is we said that pin 9 was the ground and so pin 9 we want the brown wire on pin 9. Well how do I do that? I know that the upper left is pin 1 so I kind of just count 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 and then I plug it in there to the 9 pin and then what I know is I know the pin right below that is pin 11. So you see I'm actually doing this I can't see it very well I'd have to get it in front of my face and that wouldn't be very fun to watch but I know the pin right below it is pin 11 and so there I missed it I went to 13 so I'm going to come back and get it right in pin 11. Okay so now I've got the ground pin 9 and I've got the GPIO pin that we're going to use the red uh, for the red wire which is pin 11. I've got that. <clears throat> now let's start with the voltage and so I'm going to start with the red wire and you come in and you just put it in one of these columns. It doesn't really matter which one. What matters is is that whichever one I use like it looks like I'm going to use let's say column 5 there. What matters is the LED plugs into that same column. Now what I want you to notice about the LED, do you notice how one leg is longer than the other? That really matters. You can't just plug the LED in any direction like this way or this way. It matters. And what you have to do is the long leg, the long leg 
needs to always be going back towards the positive voltage. So you see the red wire is the positive voltage. And so which leg needs to be in that column? The long leg. And so the long leg needs to be in the column with the positive voltage, okay, like that. And then the short leg needs to just be wherever it's convenient, just a couple of columns over. Okay, so I think what I did was I put the long leg in the same column as the red wire, and then like I skipped a column, and then the next column, I put the short leg of the LED. Now, if we look at our schematic, and we look at our picture, what do we see? Ah, I did not follow it, sorry. Everything I said about the long leg is still true, but here I have the resistor in next. Okay, so let's put the resistor in. And while I say about the resistor, the direction of the resistor doesn't matter, but I like to kind of bend kind of my legs straight down like that and straight down like that, kind of making that shape. And that makes it easier to keep your circuit. Okay, so where does the red wire connect? The red wire connects to the left leg of the resistor. Now for the resistor, you could put it in this way or you could put it in this way. The direction doesn't matter on the resistor, but you just have to make sure that you put it in the same column. You put it in the same column as your power supply, okay? And now the other leg, it can go in any column, just kind of whichever one it naturally comes to whichever one it naturally reaches and now I've got the resistor in. Now the right leg of the resistor connects to what? <coughs> the right leg of the resistor connects to the LED. In which leg of the LED? The long leg. Why the long leg? Because the positive voltage is coming from this direction and the long leg always has to be pointing towards the positive of the circuit. And I've got to have this long leg in the same column as that right leg of the resistor. And then the short leg can kind of be wherever is convenient. You see, just over a couple of columns. But you just couldn't plug the short leg into that same column or you would be shorting that out. You just got to go over a little bit. And then finally, the short leg of the LED connects to what? The ground. And so we're going to come and bring that ground wire into the same column as the short leg. And uh, <clears throat> I'm verifying that that is in the same one. Okay, so now we have our circuit hooked up. <clears throat> and our purple card is very crooked, so we're going to have to get everything very straight here. Everything in the universe in proper order. Okay, so that looks really, really good. So we've gone from the schematic. <clears throat> we've gone from the schematic. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've gone from the schematic to a physical layout. <clears throat> and then we've, <clears throat> sorry, we have built it now in the real world. All right, so now if we go in, now is the time that we would go in and we would actually start working with the GPIO pins, getting them configured. But what I always like to do is let's just say that it didn't work. Then we wouldn't know, was our LED bad? Did we hook it up wrong? Is one of the components wrong? Is a wire wrong? I wanna confirm that this circuit actually works before I go in and start playing with the GPIO pins. How can I make sure that everything, all the hardware at this point works, okay? What I could do is I could take this red, my power pin, and I could disconnect it from 11, and I could come up to pin one and plug it into pin one, which is 3.3 volts. Boom, look at that, the LED comes on. That tells me that my circuit and my components are good. Now, if we run into a problem, we'll know that the problem is with our coding. So now we are coming back to pin 11 and putting it back. It's a lot easier if you can pick this up and put it in front of your face, but I've got to keep it in your view. And so I've got to kind of do it sort of carefully without being able to see it real well. Okay, I think that is right. So now I believe we're going to need to come over here to a different view. And in this view now, I'm going to go ahead and move my circuit up here so you can see. 
So you can see the Raspberry Pi in real time. You can see a live view of the circuit, <clears throat> and then you're going to be able to see what I'm coding. All right, so we're now ready to go in and we are ready to start coding. So what I need you to do is hopefully have your Raspberry Pi already fired up. And what we're going to do is we are going to come over here. And what I need you to do is fire up a terminal. So you just click on this little terminal icon and then let's see. Boom, there you've got a terminal. You come up in Linux. The dollar sign says it's waiting for a Linux command. But we're going to control we're going to control the GPIO pin through Python, okay? But I'm not going to write a Python program and run it. We're just going to run in the shell at the command line so we're sending Python commands one at a time so you can just sort of kind of keep track of uh, you know, keep track of things one line at a time. And then you can always come in later and uh, and write a, uh, you can always come in later and write a, uh, write a program. So let's come in and what we're going to do is go to the Python shell and we do that how by just typing in Python, right? Wrong, <laughs> wrong. Why do you just not type in Python? <clears throat> you guys that took lesson number three, if you type in Python, it goes to Python 2.7, which is deprecated. We don't want to use that. We want to use Python 3. So here I'm going to come in and say quit, open, close. That takes me out. We want Python 3. How do we get that? By typing Python 3 and boom, this fires up for me. Python 3.7.3 gives me the three, uh, it gives me the three greater than signs saying that it is waiting for a Python command. Well, if we're gonna, <clears throat> if we're going to work with <clears throat> nothing a little coffee won't fix. If we are going to work with the GPIO pins, we need to load <coughs> we need to load the GPIO library. And how do we do that? Remember import and we import RP uppercase little i for Raspberry Pi and then GPIO all uppercase. This is the library. Now we want to import that as what? You can import it as whatever you want, but I'm going to import it as GPIO uppercase, okay? If you use something other than GPIO, then when you call it, you've got to call it whatever you called it. So like if you imported it as kitty litter, then anytime you wanted to address it, you would address it as kitty litter. But I think it would be more meaningful if we called it GPIO like that. Boom, library has been imported. So we're ready to talk to the GPIO pins. Well, the first thing that we have to do is remember how I was telling you that there are two different numbering schemes. There is the board numbering scheme and then there is the BCM numbering scheme. What do we want to use? We want to use the board numbering scheme. So we've got to tell it that. And how do we do it? How do we do that? We called the GPIO, the GPIO in dot. What do we do? A set mode. We tell it what mode we want to be in. And the mode that we want to be in is GPIO. <clears throat> That's what we imported the library as. And then what? B-O-A-R-D like that. Now, if we wanted it to be the BCM numbering, we would have put dot BCM. Boom, it liked that. Now, just like in Arduino, just like in Arduino, you had to do a pin mode. You have to tell Raspberry Pi whether our pin is going to be an input or an output. So we're going to do a GPIO.setup where we're going to set up a pin. Which pin are we using? We're using board pin 11. And then what is board pin going to be? It's going to be a GPIO.out all uppercase. Now the GPIO here is what we named the library when we bring it in. And then the dot out is the method that's being called. So you've got to do it just like that. Whoa. Uh, okay. So this is as good of a time as any to learn this. What is wrong? I was playing with this. <clears throat> beforehand. I was playing with this beforehand and when I was playing with it, I didn't release the GPIO pin. So when you are done with the GPIO pins, you need to do a GPIO.cleanup or 
you end up locking them up and messing things up for the other guy. So when you exit your program or when you're done, you always have to release things. So we're going to do that. You probably didn't get that error, so you will be okay. But now I need to go back and then I need to import this again. And then I need to go back and I need to do my set mode again. And then I need to go back and I need to do my uh, GPIO 11 and make it an out. And you see now it's happy because I cleaned it up. All right. So embarrassing little rookie mistake there. But it's kind of good that I made it because if I did, you would make it and then you wouldn't know what's uh, what's going on. And so what you always got to do is when you're done, you've got to release those pins with the GPO uh, thing. So we've told it we're on board. We've told it that 11 is an output. What are we ready to do? We are ready to try to turn that LED on. And we do that with GPIO. What do I want to do? <coughs> I want to do a dot output. And then what do I want to output to pin 11? And then what I want to do is I want to make it true. Okay. This is where we really hold our breath. This is our first GPIO command. All eyes on the LED. Hold your breath. Boom. Look at that. Who's the magic man? I'm the magic man. Look at that. We turn the LED on. Okay. Well, if you can turn the LED on, how would you turn it off? Any guesses? Oh, how am I getting that previous command? I'm just hitting the up arrow and it takes me back. Instead of true, any guesses? False. All eyes on the LED. Shazam. Look at that. It turned off. Okay. We can turn the LED on. We can turn the LED off. I also just kind of wonder, like, what if I did a GPIO dot out? put in instead of doing true what if I just said make it a one boom that works and similarly I could make it a zero and I could turn it off okay look at that we're turning it on and off now I also kind of can show you a lot li uh, a library that I'm not sure I showed you last week when you're actually programming these GPIO pins a lot of times you want to put a delay in your program how do you do a delay in Python you say import time like that and then you just do time dot sleep and tell it how many seconds so let's say we want to sleep for three seconds and then we click enter 1001 1002 1003 and boom it's ready for the next command or you could say time dot sleep uh, a decimal like 0.1 would be a tenth of a second and boom it comes back so that's how you do delays now I really don't like the true false business very much and so what I would probably do is I would come in and I would say on is equal to true true and then I would say off is equal to false <clears throat> and then we could come in and we could do the uh, we could do the output and we could output on like that, boom, it comes off and we could, comes on, and then we could do output off and it goes off. Look at that. All right, guys, man, this is so exciting to me. This is really, really, really cool stuff. Now, what is it that we should probably go ahead and do now? What we should probably go ahead and do is do our GPIO dot clean up. So we clean up our mess. <clears throat> and we leave a clean slate for the new guys. Whoever comes in and uses this, they've got a clean slate. Now, what would maybe be one other just kind of cool thing to try to do here just to make sure that we understand things, right? This, we use the which, we use the board set mode. What is the other one? BCM. In the BCM numbering system, pin 11 on the board would be what the BCM pin 17. Let's see if we can do that just to make sure that we understand things right. And so to do that, also it's just practice to do this again. To do that, what would we do? We would import rpi.gpio, okay, as what gpio like that. All right, that's happy. Then I would do a gpio.set mode, and that would be gpio dot what? B, C, M, like that. All right, now we're going to do a GPIO dot what dot set up lowercase, and then we're going to set it up as what GPIO 
GPIO dot what? Not board, but BCM, like that, All right? Now, oh, hopefully that was a simple error. What did I do? That sure looks right. GPIO dot setup. Oh, 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 okay. I got to tell it, I got to tell it which, uh, I just, I just kind of, okay, set mode. Oh, I did set up. I already did that. Okay. Set up. That was just a terrible mistake. The setup is which pin? The setup is pin 17. Okay, because I already did the GPIO dot set mode. So the GPIO dot setup is pin 17, which is the BCM pin for physical pin 11. And then what do I want it as? I want it as a GPIO dot out. I got going too fast and I just glitched on you. All right, so this then should set BCM pin 17, which is physical pin 11 is an output. And uh, that took it. Okay, that's good. It's happy now. And now what I could do is GPIO dot output and we're going to output to what 17, which is really pin 11. And we're going to do a what we are going to do a true like that. Boom. BCM mode. Turn the LED on. Okay. Wow. All right. So now if we turn it on, <clears throat> we probably need to go ahead and turn it off. So I'll say false. Boom, it's off. And now what do we need to do? GPIO dot clean up like that. And boom, now we've cleaned up our mess. The GPIO pins are available to whoever uses it next. Time. I was going to come in and show you like how important, how important, like the whole point of the lesson is always clean up your GPIO pins when you're done and all that. And then what did I do? I forgot to do it in this lesson. And so that was a pretty bad mistake. Okay, guys, man, I hope you're having as much fun with this as I am. This is just really, really neat stuff, really, really cool stuff. And I just get so excited about turning an LED on and off because I know that if I can turn that LED on and off, it's like the world is my oyster. I can just turn on anything and turn off anything and control. It just, it really, it, it takes you, it bridges the gap from something that is very powerful, right? This this uh, our, this Raspberry Pi is very powerful. It's almost as powerful as a desktop computer, but then it gives you access to the outside world through these GPIO pins. And that is just so incredible and it's just so powerful and is so valuable. And so what we're going to be doing as we go through the rest of these lessons, we're going to be coming up with more and more... <clears throat> interesting components in the kit and then we're going to be doing more and more complex and more and more sophisticated calculations and computation and so our projects are going to just be getting better and better and better but we've set the the, the kind of core foundation here and that is from python you can control the GPIO pins. And so that's going to really allow some really incredible things. Now, I will need to give you guys a homework assignment. And what your homework assignment is, is to take this circuit and now go in and actually write a Python program. And I showed you how to do that in lesson number three, but you want to edit a program and you want to write a program that number one, inputs, ask the user for input, ask the user how many times he wants to blink the LED. And then when he answers, then come in and blink the LED that number of times. And then I want it where you don't have to run the program again. It'll just come in and then ask him again to, uh, you know, ask him again, how many times does he want to blink the LED and then blink it for that number of times. And that is what your homework assignment is going to be. Now, what you need to do is, and guys, I know that for a lot of you, this is like really, really simple. I'm going to do the, the solution to the homework 
And these premiere uh, lessons are released on Thursdays. And so if you're watching this as a premiere on Thursday, I will release the solution to this homework assignment on Friday. So you can tune in on Friday to watch the solution to this homework. If you guys are really advanced and already know how to do this, you can just tune in next Thursday to the next lesson. So next Thursday will be the next lesson on Friday tomorrow for you guys watching the premiere it will be the uh, my homework solution to the to the homework that I just uh, that I just gave you so hopefully uh, hopefully that makes sense now when you do the homework you need to take a screen capture of it do a screen recording or you could even just point your phone at your screen and record it and then upload your solution to YouTube in the description of your homework solution make sure you link back to this video so anyone watching it will have context so link back to this video then in the comments down below leave a comment with a link over your homework assignment and I watch every single homework assignment every single homework assignment you guys do I watch because I like really seeing are you guys learning do you know what you're doing are there people that are really doing things so I watch every single homework assignment okay guys I hope you are having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them you can see I'm getting really really excited about this class and I can't wait for next week to go to the next lesson if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up if you've not already subscribed to the channel subscribe and when you do make sure to ring that bell so you'll get notification when future lessons come out and share this video with other people okay share this series of lessons with other people because the world needs more people that can do engineering and code and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com reminding you guys to resist the metaverse, <laughs> resist the metaverse. Okay, I will talk to you guys later.